Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. My name's Mike, I'm the diving developer. These are solar panels, this is Solar Sunday, and I'm gonna show you how I use this, the My Energy app, to charge my car from the solar power for free. This is west facing. So east is in that direction, and there's another set of solar panels, just like this 10 on the other side. And then over here, got four and those are south facing but you know the um the angle's not not the best uh, and then obviously on the other side of the roof on that side we've got uh, on the other side of the palm tree there we've got a selection of panels as well all picking power up from the sun the house has 27 kilowatt hour of battery storage from two tesla power or twos and we also have two solar edge inverters each one is five kilowatt. Now these inverters are responsible for taking the electricity from the panels, which is in DC or direct current, and transferring that to AC or alternating current for the house to use at 240 volts here in the Isle of Man, which is very similar to the UK. Now they're also responsible for taking the DC power from the batteries or from the panels and turning it to AC and pushing it out towards the grid when we come to export. Okay, so I was just filming a video about the Tesla and I thought, Actually, it would be quite cool to show you sort of how the solar system works with respect to the car. The Zappi is the car charger, but it's not just any car charger, it's sort of like a smart car charger. So, and that's responsible for charging the car. As you can see, the car's charging at 4.3 kilowatt right now. One kilowatt is worth four miles if it gets it for an hour. So we call that a kilowatt hour or KWH. So currently, look, it's 3.1, and all of these numbers will bounce around in all different directions, hopefully avoiding this one, which is the grid coming into the house. We really don't want that because this costs us money. The solar generation fluctuates, just loads, right? It just fluctuates, it just jumps up and down, it bounces all over the place, just like you can see here. Right here, earlier on today, just about 11, 11 to 12 o'clock, we had, you know, quite a bit of cloud, there was a bit of mist, a bit of drizzle, and our generation dropped right down to about two kilowatt from about nine kilowatt. So it went from being a really balmy day to being, you know, reasonably dark one. This is the delicate balancing act that happens. Power coming in from the panels goes into the house. Now, if there isn't enough, it gets topped up from the batteries. And then obviously, if there's, you know, the needs are being met with the house, the excess goes along here and then into the batteries. The way I've set it up is that once the batteries are full, the excess goes into the car. But this is where it gets really tricky because a car won't charge until you have 1.4 kilowatt of excess. The first priority is the house and then whatever's left into the batteries. When the batteries are full, whatever's left into the car. But there's a catch. The car needs 1.4 or it won't even switch on. So we could be at a point where we're exporting a kilowatt to the grid and the car just never charges. So what you can do inside Zappi here is you can tell it to set this minimum green level here. So if we set this all the way to 100%, this means that you must have 1.4 of excess before it will go into the car. And if you set it down here, it just means you just need any excess and it will go into the car and make up the rest from the battery or the grid. I sort of set this somewhere around here. There is a break even point because of course, the energy that you have to import to fill the car costs money, but it's you also get a tiny bit of money for what you feed out and sort of like the balance between the two is where you should probably set that value. I would much rather just have the car charging than have to buy it back in later. It's just much more convenient to just make sure the car's got the power. Um, you can also, when you've got the, when you've got it on this override, this, when you've got the Zappi working on this eco sort of mode, you can go ahead and set the boost. Boss, give me a boost! To force it to put in at maximum power, whatever you want. So the, so the car is this big, 80 kilowatt and I can set the boost to say 10 or 40. And if you multiply these numbers by four, you get the number of miles. So that's 40 miles, that's 120 miles. And we can go, right, how much do I want to just push into the car now? Set it to that, click boost now, and it will charge at the maximum rate. And the maximum rate is seven kilowatt. So as you can see up here, we're doing 3.3 or four. Um, but if I press boost, it will just, just go to maximum. And that energy will just come straight out of the batteries. Now, Tesla's got a slightly different view. This is the view from the car. Um, so the car's currently at 46%, and it's telling me that if I charge to 72%, that's just, just a random number, if I set it to 80 there, 
if I charge to 80% at the current rate of four kilowatt, which is just a little bit above half charging speed, then there is eight hours. It's gonna take eight hours to get there. But bear in mind that this is charging slower than normal, but it's charging for free. Now if we slide over to our catnip power plant, this is how things look from the Tesla view. We've got our six kilowatt of solar coming in right now. Here's something Tesla needs to sort out here because it's a Tesla car charging from a Tesla system and a little bit of Tesla Powerwall, and yet it says that 6.8 kilowatts going to the home. That's not true. The actual home amount is uh, it's charging at three kilowatt, so it's 6.8 minus three, so the house is using about four kilowatts at the minute. It'd be nice not to do the maths and have a little picture of a car so it can show you what's going to the car, just like Zappy does. But as you can see at the minute, we've got the power wall, which is full, and it's providing 800 watts. It's not a problem because it will get that back again in a moment. Um, the house and the car are using 5.8 combined, but of course we're putting one kilowatt out to the grid. Now Zappy's gonna notice that and increase the demand to the car. As you can see, it's now dropping down to 400 watts. Oh, it's gone up to 1.3 again as, as things fluctuate. But of course the power will makes up that difference. So it, just, it takes like a, uh, maybe like five, 10 seconds or so for, for each various part of the system to just sort of respond. There's no software standard, just talking to the software developers out there, there's no sort of software standard for these things. It would be great if they talk to each other over sort of a nice open standard, but that hasn't happened yet. Hopefully in the future that will. Let's look at the energy for the house today. And this is what we've used. You can see we've got some base load going on overnight there. And then we've started to use quite a bit of energy during the day. The energy that we've taken for the house so far, you can see it's nearly three o'clock, um, is 16.5 kilowatt. And 10.8 of that comes directly from the solar. 3.9 from the power wall. And that's, that can be, for example, solar that we've just grabbed yesterday, still filled the batteries. We can then use it the next day. Or it could be, energy from the batteries that we've sort of downloaded or, or imported from the grid uh, overnight at off peak rate. Uh, this is our solar generation according to Tesla. You can see the little big gap there in the middle where, the, where things went a bit bad. But we have generated a peak here of 8.8 .8 kilowatt. Our system is capable of doing 10. It shows where energy is going into the power wall. This is pretty interesting. So overnight, we entered the night with 50% in the power wall. The power wall here is charged entirely from solar and not from the grid. So the power wall knows the power wall knows that it can charge from the grid if it needs to, but it hasn't. It, it has refused to charge from the grid. It's only charging from the solar. So over night time, we were on you know, 50 to 46%, and then we've charged all the way up to full before even the mid-afternoon. And this shows our grid usage. And our net grid use is minus two, minus 0.2, sorry, kilowatt hours, which means that overall we've actually exported, but we don't get paid the same. So we will actually have a little bill for today. And that is because we've actually imported 1.8 kilowatt hour from the grid at full price. Well, actually, no, we've imported 1.8 kilowatt hour from the grid and we've exported uh, two kilowatt hours to the grid. Uh, meaning with our net usage is, is slightly, slightly carbon negative there. As a final note, it's truly amazing to think about the power of the sun and how we can harness it to fuel our vehicles. Driving an electric vehicle that can be charged at home with free renewable solar power is not only good for the environment, but it really is a thrilling experience. Being able to drive on sunshine and reduce my carbon footprint is something I think I can be proud of. It's also something that I'd love to help empower others to do too, which is why in earlier videos, you can download a free calculator tool to help you figure out whether or not the pricing will work for you from divingdeveloper.net. Please like the video if you liked it and also subscribe for more content. I'm trying to put out a Solar Sunday video every Sunday, so stay tuned for that. And from me to you, take care and I'll see you in the next video.